Seeing as Stable Diffusion 2 has been out for oh, days now, I figured I'd do the usual and use Dream Booth on some close-up pictures of my face. However, it turned out that many of the existing Dream Booth programs didn't quite support V Diffusion yet, and I wanted to use the 768V model. This isn't the entire story, however, as after I'd added my likeness to the collective and had finished turning myself into a superhero cyborg alien from a lost civilization, I turned my attention to image to image. And, oh goodness, that is ever so much better. Just to make sure that I wasn't completely losing it, I checked again against the Stable Diffusion 1.4 image to image and also the Stable Diffusion 1.5 in-painting model image to image. Obviously the 1.5 was a lot better, but still not quite as good as Stable Diffusion 2. However, despite this not being an in-painting model, Stable Diffusion 2 768V does seem to have a really good idea of where things should be. You know, faces and bodies and such. It works so well that just using image to image I can handle almost any pose and any angle and, well, almost any number of faces as well. Do I even need to use masks anymore? I'm not sure. And this is all from a dataset which just has the exact same close-up portraits that I used in 1.4 and 1.5 as well. Do you want to know how to do all of this yourself and get all that juicy 2.0 goodness? Okay. As well as training, you're obviously going to need something for inference as well. I'm using the Automatic 11.11 Web UI. Links are down in the description. Very easy to install. As you can see from the repository there, just a few steps. Works on Linux and Windows and all sorts of operating systems. So terribly easy to get running. For the training, I'm using Hugging Face Diffusers, as this is the only repository I've found so far which fully supports version 2 and the 768V diffusion model. To manage the myriad of Python environments which I have, I am using Anaconda, and you should do if you're going to follow along exactly with this. So make sure you've got Anaconda installed and running, and we can dive straight in. As Dream Booth works really well with just four pictures, I thought to do another test other than my face, I'd pop over to Sketchfab and see what 3D models I could use. They have a number of licenses, as you can see there, CC BY and CC0, lots of categories you can download and you can have a look for ones with animations and things like that. The one I picked in the end was this one here, a lovely 3D model by VURYOS, not even sure how to pronounce that, but there it is. And as you can see in this interface as well, you can actually move the model around, so you don't even need to download it. Of course, if you are a 3D whiz, then you can do that. You can do all sorts of shots in Blender or Maya or whatever 3D program you use, but I'm a noob, so there I can just pose the model any way I want in the browser, and there are the four images that I can create, one from the side, from the other side, and the front. Very easy way just to create some training data. Easy peasy, eh? So now I've got my four training images. There they are, just four images. And I can begin installing the Diffusers version of Dream Booth. If you've seen any of my videos, this follows the same basic process. I'm going to conda create minus minus name. And in this particular case, I've called it DB Diffusers. Of course, you can pick any name you like. And I'm using Python 3.10. I then activate that environment, conda activate whatever name you gave it and then you are ready to do your git clone. So here I am, git clone, that downloads the diffusers repository, and then I can change directory into diffusers examples dream booth. There, I can simply run pip install minus u minus r requirements.txt, and that will install all the packages for me. One slight note, however, is that this will install PyTorch 113, which is currently incompatible with a great many things, including the automatic 11.11 web UI. So to get around that, I just install a previous version. There it is. Condor install PyTorch 1.12.1. If you're using an AMD card, don't install the CUDA version because CUDA doesn't work on AMD. You will need to install the Rock M version. So pip install torch equals 1.12.1 plus Rock M 5.1.1.
You're also going to need Xformers as the 768 model is rather large and eats memory. So on Linux, you can just conda install Xformers. If you're using Microsoft Windows, you're going to need to compile and install that yourself. The instructions are, of course, on the Xformers repository. So you can just copy and paste that. There it is. Pip install Ninja and Cutlass. Set your torch CUDA art list to whichever card is appropriate for you, such as 8.6 for the 3090 and then pip install as normal. Once you've got everything installed, you're pretty much ready. You can set up your training configuration. So here I'm running accelerate config. I'm selecting everything locally and I'm opting to use FP16. And this is the default configuration that I use for running the train dream booth Python. As you can see there, I'm using the Stability AI Stable Diffusion 2 repository. So setting that model name will automatically download it from Hugging Face. My instance is that 3D model test 768, those four pictures that you saw. And I have a class directory of other 3D models. I'm saving it to my hard disk drive. And I've also got another option in there, which you don't need, because later on, I automatically convert that into the original stable diffusion format. Here, this is based on my CPU. I'm running num CPU threads per process of eight, and I'm using mixed precision FP16. Do take a look at the Hugging Face Diffusers website for all the other different options there. This is for 24 gig of VRAM. You can run it in a little bit less, but you will need to use different options. So here for the 3D model, I'm using that as my token, so N3 RD1 3D character model and for the class prompt just a 3D character model because that's fairly generic. Resolution you will need to change to 768 by default that is 512 in most of the examples there. I am training the text encoder I'm using prior preservation. I'm also using gradient accumulation steps too because that seemed to be a little bit better but your mileage may vary. Train batch and sample batch size I've also set to 1 and mixed precision to FP16. A learning rate of 1E-6 seems absolutely fine, and I'm just doing 500 steps here, and I've set save steps to 2001 because this version automatically saves at the end anyway. Once you've set all your options, you can simply then run the training and wait some time. In my example here, it's about 20 minutes to complete the 500 steps with gradient accumulation set to 2. I also found that the default conversion script didn't quite work. I loaded it up into automatic 11.11. It didn't seem to recognize my tokens. This conversion script here from the Lawford P2017 diffusers, however, does seem to work. So download that script there, convert diffusers to original stable diffusion, and you will have a script that works. And if I just do a quick test on that, there we go. We can see we have a rather nice picture of that 3D model and I put it inside a cyberpunk city. And how well does this work in image to image? Well, let's take a look. See, we'll drop an image in there and a little prompt as well. Now, one thing to make this work well is to drop the denoising strength down from 0.75 on the default to around about 0.63. If you have a quick look at this image here, you'll see all the various different denoising strengths. Once you go above about 0.7, then it seems to lose coherence a little bit and will just become more like the prompt. That image, then there we go. We've got, well, the tiger's turned into something robotic, but she has turned into something that's very much like that 3D model. Of course, even though I only trained on full body, if I just drop a head portrait in there, and sort of generate what's, well, it's a statue really, isn't it? So, oh, there we go. Look at that. That is pretty good. Even though I trained full body, there was no faces in there. It was miles away. It knows that it seems to be a robotic face. And how about if I give it sort of half a robot? Does it know what's going on there? Yeah, not bad. That's all right. That's pretty good. I like that. That is a robotic robot. And of course, is any test complete? If you haven't used girl with a pearl earring, no it isn't, so let's use girl with a pearl earring and make her robotic. There we go. Very nice indeed. It would seem then that with Stable Diffusion 2768V, it's very good at keeping coherence in image to image. Almost as good, in fact, 
probably maybe even a little bit better in many cases as the Stable Diffusion 1.5 in-painting model. That means it doesn't really matter too much the data that you use to train your Dream Booth model. If you're using image to image, then you can get an accurate representation of almost any pose just by dragging the image in that you want to emulate. I think there's hours of fun to be had there, and if you're having a few problems with prompts, then why not take a look at this video.